Hello everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now we all experience fear from time to time, but when does fear turn into a phobia? Well, let me first give you the dictionary definition of a phobia. It's a persistent, abnormal and irrational fear of a specific thing or situation that compels one to avoid it despite the awareness and reassurance that it's not dangerous. Phobias are often laughed at by people not going through them, but they are very real and very distressing for that person. Today, we'll be talking to Charlie Simmons about her own phobias and how she copes with it. We'll also be speaking to psychologist Dr. Audrey Tang about how phobias can be treated, and I'll also be discussing how people with phobias can help themselves with coach Chris Brown. We'll also be watching a woman trying to face a fear and we'll find out some common and unusual phobias. But first, let's have the news with Helena Shard. Hello, Helena. Hi, Chrissy. <laughs> How are Hello. you doing? Yeah, good. Good, good. good. Okay, so phobias today. Phobias. Have to ask you. Yes. Do you have any or have you had any? Yeah, it took me a while to think. I was doing some research on the subject, which is amazingly interesting. Mm -hmm. There are so many different phobias. There's phobia for everything, it turns out. Yeah. It took me a while to come up with some things that I'm not too happy with, but I wouldn't okay. necessarily call them phobias. Would you, would you go out of your way to avoid them, that thing? Not, uh, I suppose so. It was something Megan Fox said, that mm -hmm. she has a, a phobia of dry paper. Now that which is an odd thing, dry paper is in uh, in books. Okay. So she always, if she's reading a book at night, she always has to have a, a glass of water so she can put her hands in it to turn the pages. Oh. And like with her script, she needs to laminate them so she doesn't uh -huh. like the feeling. Okay. So which led me to think about feelings and noises. And one mm. thing I can't oh. bet is <laughs> yeah. Okay, on, don't a, say. on a blackboard. Yeah, I hate that. But not just that, the thought of teeth on a blackboard too. Oh, oh no, oh, thanks for putting that in my head, that wasn't there <laughs> before. So it's something that I, wouldn't, like, I don't like, and I don't think people in general yeah. would like, but I wouldn't call it a phobia. I mean, there's simple phobias, and then there's yeah. complex phobias, so I wouldn't think there was okay. anything too much. But another mm. thing as well, um, Prince Harry um, brought up recently, National AIDS Day, I think we discussed it, mm -hmm. about um, his secret, which was public speaking. If he's wearing a suit and he's public speaking, he always gets really clammy and anxious. And to a yeah. degree, occasionally, I'm the same. Mm -hmm. Something, or it's an irrational fear for, for whatever reason. But fear's good sometimes because yeah. it means you care, doesn't it? Yeah. It means you want to do the best. So it's mm -hmm. not such a bad well, thing. I think public speaking <clears throat> scares most people, to be honest. Yeah, I don't I think, think so. there's anyone that maybe goes out there and doesn't get the jitters before butterflies in the stomach. Yeah. I think everyone does to an extent, and but it doesn't necessarily yeah. affect your performance. Yeah. You have to You'd still go and do it. it. Yeah. yeah, so that was one of the things. But um, okay. you found a lot of celebs strange. that have phobias, didn't you? Loads of celebs that have phobias. The, the most, I mean, strangest of phobias as well, and also yeah. friends. And I was talking to them about their phobias, which is just really, really odd. There's one that Nicki Minaj allegedly mm. has a phobia of escalators. Now, I'm not too sure whether it is the truth or not, because it's uh, recently she was at um, a car launch and they asked her to come down the red, um, an escalator on the red carpet because they, she needed to be papped, so okay. a, a photographer's waiting, and she wouldn't, and she oh. just couldn't. Okay. So they, they assumed it was a fear. Mm -hmm. But she could have just had too high a shoe or something. You, don't, you just don't know. Yeah. It could have been something sim simple as that. Um, Tom Cruise, phobia of going bald. I'm not too sure. I mean, oh, he he's can got afford to get a hair He has I'm got the it. thickest hair going, hasn't he? Maybe that's why he, he loves his hair so much that he's afraid of going for it. I know, allegedly he, had a, he bought a contraption that, that massages his head so he doesn't go bald. I don't okay. know. Allegedly, that is. Yeah. Um, but he can just get a hair yeah, transplant, he can, couldn't he? It's he like, can. Oh, it's um, nothing for him. Just funny ones, Kylie Minogue, frightened of hangers. So at home, hangers. she hangers, that she hangs, you know, she doesn't hang clothes at all. She has one room that she lays all her clothes out on. Oh, wow. So you can imagine what it's like. Mess. I know. Anyway, that's, that's her, I love her funny thing. <laughs> I love wooden things. <clears throat> Do you? I have I don't, I actually, too. maybe I have, a, I have a thing about metal hangers. I don't like them. I will not use them. Scratchy. I just don't like Scratchy them. Scratchy, they're not horrible. very good. They I like all wooden, wooden hangers. Yeah. They look nice and neat. And, and they wood. don't hold the clothes very well, no, those thin ones. But we're not here to talk about hangers. No, we're not. We're not. <laughs> well, Woody Allen is, is a funny one because yeah. he has panophobia and apparently that is a fear of everything. I think it's a fear of no. pans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really sounds it, doesn't it? A fear of pans. But how can you um, have a fear of everything? I don't know. I find that bizarre because he's so successful. 
And really, if you think about phobias, it's debilitating yeah. and it really prevents you from doing the things that you want to do. And he's really achieved, so I can't see how it has. But anyway, apparently... Unless it's not that apparently serious, because maybe, maybe, maybe it hasn't crossed over to a phobia yet, because yeah. phobia, the person would avoid a lot of stuff, wouldn't sure, they? Sure, that's why I think it's strange, unless yeah. he's had help to overcome yeah, it. Yeah, it could be. And one of his funny ones is he's got a phobia of peanut butter on the roof of his mouth, which apparently is a common phobia. Yeah. I mean, I don't like it. I don't eat peanut butter that much, but it's oh, not very nice. <laughs> do you like I can kind of understand it because you mm. might feel like you'd, you'd choke because it does yeah. kind of get stuck in your throat. Like, Give me some water quick. Yeah, ah, okay. I can kind of understand that one. Um, can but to p the person that's going through it is very rational, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Irrational fear. Um, Kelly Osborne, half a phobia, which is the fear of being touched. Oh, wow. Well. Which I didn't realize, which is, that's quite something, that isn't it? That must affect her. Yeah, really and you'd badly. never think. Imagine a relationship. Yeah. How is she gonna? How do you overcome it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there are. That's. I was looking into overcoming phobias, and the best thing, obviously, obviously, is to talk um, mm. and certain kinds of um, counselling. But it's CBT, cognitive, cognical, no, cognitive, cognitive behavioural yeah. therapy. Okay. And I have a friend who was scared of snakes, and she was going to Africa. Mm. And apparently, at London Zoo, they do something like that. Oh, do they? And it starts off by introducing the pictures and skin and slowly slowly you see the oh snake man, and then you touch got to film it. it yeah yeah <laughs> next time but um which is quite interesting um there are so many i'm just trying to think of ones which are really the dark is a classic one mm. again understandable yeah and again that's irrational fear and i i don't necessarily think it's the dark it's it's what's what's waiting for yeah. you yeah and from about the age of two you feel or insecure something then, you don't know you can't <coughs> see what, what's around you so obviously from the your age imagination of two, you're does. like you think that someone's there to gobble you up or <laughs> something like yeah, that. I don't yeah, know. I remember those days. Um, fear of clowns. Hello, Chrissy. Do you have something to tell us? <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, uh, movie Swiss. No, so it's. I don't uh, like clowns. Johnny, do you don't, I used to have nightmares you? about them. I don't know why. I had, used to have these nightmares about this clown at my at, at the living room window that would just sort of come up to the window and just be like uh, there. It's probably a film or something. I don't like dolls. Something. I don't like things with faces. I like teddy bears, but I don't like dolls. I don't like anything like that. I think they just look creepy. So you don't like the porcelain, Hate creepy, them. creepy Hate dogs? Hate any kind of ornament. Um, Channing, Channing Tatum, who's a famous actor, was on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Mm -hmm. I actually yeah. saw the clip. And it was so cruel what they did because he's got a real fear of these dolls. And they literally, she brought one out and put it to his face, and he just recoiled yeah. in his seat in absolute fear really? over it. So I'm not afraid of them. I'll pick them up and everything, but I just don't like. I just don't think they I look. Don't, I nice. actually think they're. Well, I, well, I don't really like them, but you know, yeah. I understand why clowns are even worse. I think they're horrible. And loads of people don't like clowns, but I think we've said it before. Johnny Depp. She, he's always playing sort of clownish I know, characters. <laughs> and I can't believe it's one of his fears. Yeah, and, and Daniel Radcliffe and other people as well. Um, Keanu, Keanu Reeves, I think, is scared of the dark. But yeah. um, <clears throat> Matthew McConaughey yeah. is afraid of re revolving doors. And I sort of understand that, because yeah. you can get trapped, can't you? Yeah. you haven't, you're not in control of, just keep going of the contraption. Yeah. <laughs> Let <Maybe>. me out! <laughs> um, but also... But some, of the, some of them, if you think about them, they kind of make sense, but there's others that make, just don't really, make any sense whatsoever to really us. Really strange. Which mm. I'm really interested in what um, Audrey has to say later about that because you know what makes one sort of understandable and the others like mm. no, I'm, not it's at all. Weird. Yeah. Um, Kira Sedgwick, who's married to Kevin Bacon, has got an odd one. She's got a real fear of talking food characters and absolutely petrified. And in to, to the extent that Kevin Bacon had to decline a, a commercial for M&M. Because he discovered he had to be a talking peanut <laughs> or something, and uh, for his wife he declined oh. it. But that's a that's an odd one. I Do you think. know what I don't like? I don't know if you remember the advert with these babies that were kind of like talking and kind of like doing oh, oh um, the, the water break adverts. dancing and all stuff. I thought oh, that I think was that's really weird. Did you? I thought it was amazing. I don't like I things like that. I think, really I think it just looks strange for babies to act like adults. I, I just hated it. So I think the concept worked worked with you then because I think it was to sort of surprise, wasn't I it? Don't, I hated it. Oh, I quite I liked really it. did. Um, Oprah Winfrey as yes, well. Yes, what she afraid Her of. Her fear is chewing gum, which mm -hmm. arose from when she was a child. Apparently, her grandmother always used to, to chew on chewing gum and then used to take it out and line it up all over the furniture. Oh, <laughs> oh that's all. And it was a fear of he, she was disgusted. So now. She can't have anybody on her show or anybody that's got chewing gum near her. It's completely, you know, a no-no. It reminds so me of another fear I had. Swallowing chewing gum. 
Because I used to swallow oh. chewing gum when I was a child and my gran used to say to me, not to do that because it's going to wrap around my heart and squeeze it and stop oh. it from beating and then I would die. Naughty grandma. Did you say grandma? Grandma. Oh, no. She was they actually. She used to tell me this weird, like, if I leave my wardrobe open, it means that someone's mm. digging my grave. <laughs> she used to tell me all these things just so I could be clean and like, tidy That's my bedroom a Greek and stuff. Thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Greek thing, never mind. But it's true, it's like how children, they, you know, fear of spiders, fear of anything. Worried. Sometimes it's true, it's what adults pass, say to children that could lead to a, a through, phobia. Through people, Definitely. absolutely. David Thank Beckham. You. Oh, I'll quickly oh. say David Beckham. I'm sure people will be. Yeah, interested. David Beckham disorder, ataxophobia. So everything has to be in order. So yeah. he's a fear. Oh, it's like disorder. That. Very good. Thank yeah. you so much, Helena. Thank you. And we'll see you again next time. Yes. Thank you. Alrighty, guys. So do stay tuned because after the break, we'll be speaking to Charlie Simmons about her phobia, and we'll also show you some unusual phobias. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show and today we're talking all about phobias. Now before we go to our next guest, Charlie Simmons, let's see if you are able to recognise any of these phobias. Number 25, Globophobia. This is the fear of balloons popping. Number 24, ombrophobia. This is the fear of rain. Number 23, geniophobia. It's the fear of chins. Number 22, trypophobia. The fear of holes. Number 21, pagonophobia. The fear of beards. Number 20, hippopotamonstrosescicepidelophobia. This is the fear of long words. Number 19, lipophobia, the fear of fats in foods. Number 18, genophobia, the fear of knees and or kneeling. Number 7, sanguiforophobia, the fear of vampires. Number 16, ergophobia, the fear of work. Number 15, emetophobia, the fear of vomiting. Number 14, arachibotyrophobia. This is the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. Number 13, triskaidekaphobia, fear of the number 13. Number 12, nomophobia, fear of being out of mobile phone contact. Number 11, ancrophobia, fear of wind. Number 10, ephebophobia, this is the fear of youth. Number 9, xanthophobia, it's the fear of the color yellow. Number 8, myrmecophobia. The fear of ants. Number seven, tourophobia. This is the fear of cheese. Number six, anthophobia. The fear of flowers. Number five, hylophobia. The fear of wood, forests, or trees. Number four, tetraphobia. Fear of the number four. Number three, omphalophobia. Fear of belly buttons. Number two, scriptophobia. This is the fear of writing in public. And number one, Pantherophobia, the fear of your mother-in-law. So most of those phobias I hadn't heard of before, but it just goes to show that phobias can cover absolutely anything. But now let's meet Charlie Simmons. Hello, Charlie. Hello. How are you, my love? I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> so good to have you on the show because mm -hmm. you've been very brave to come and talk about a phobia that, that you have. Can mm -hmm. you tell us about that? It's an odd one. Not many people have it, not that I know of anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's, it's a fear of tall buildings, but man-made, like really tall. Mm -hmm. It's just something, something about the fact that they're so tall that you have, like, I think it's just the fact that they're so tall and man-made, someone made them. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just something about it. It's, I can't point, put a finger on it, but it just really scares me. And when did you realise that you had an issue with that? I think it started when I went to Toronto in Canada with my family when I was about 10. Mm -hmm. And we went to visit the CN Tower. and. That was to then known the most tallest freestanding building. And the fact that I had to really put my head back to look at it really freaked me out. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but once I was inside it, it didn't bother me. But the Could fact you go to the, to the top, do you mm -hmm. think? And yeah, we went, to, we went to the 16th floor and they had a glass floor. That was quite freaky, but I think that would be freaky. So for the everybody. height didn't bother you when just, you were there? It was just the bottom, of the bottom looking up. Wow. It's really odd. I can't. I, I don't understand why. So I'm when you when you were looking up at it for the first time, did 
is it difficult for you to talk about? Or no, it's not, easy, it's not difficult. Just but when just you're there. When I'm there. I mean, thinking okay. about it, it makes my mouth dry and okay. the heart starts to go a little bit. But yeah. it's just, I, I really can't understand why. I think. I know, because when I look up for, obviously, I know it's, each person's different. When I look at a tall building, it does look kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, what's. Hmm. But I think it's more like, imagine if it was to fall or something mm. happened and something fell from it. Yeah. It's kind of that thinking. Mm -hmm. But with you, you just don't know. No, I mean, is. even the thought of knowing that someone built it with their hands, knowing that they're that, that high on scaffolding as well, oh, that okay. freaks me out as well. So it could be a little bit to do with the height. Maybe. The okay. thing is, I mean, I haven't got vertigo or nothing. I, I go into a, going from a looking down from a height probably would scare me, but the thought of standing below something so tall, yeah, that really sort of makes my heart go. Just so I can't, I can't, I don't know why. It's just mm. something that makes just something about it. If you put me in front of a building. If I just look straight on, it's fine. But as soon as I look up and see it's that tall, mm -hmm. it just freaks me out. Has it affected you in any way in terms of sort of living your life the way you want it want to? Or no, it hasn't. I mean, well, when I was a, few, or a couple of years ago, we got um, my parents bought my sister and I a trip to New York. Mm. The thought of that sort of freaked me out because I thought there's so many buildings, yeah. so many buildings. And my sister was like, yeah, we have to go up the Empire State. And I was like, oh, here we go. But once we got there, yeah. I said, I'm not going to look up, just go straight in. Mm -hmm. So if I looked up, that would really, I wouldn't be able to go. Okay. If I saw the building from down below to look up, it, I would have been really freaked out. So you don't it's, know anyone else that has the same, no, the same fear? No. Have it's, you ever tried to get help for it? I haven't because I think if I don't, if I don't, go to, if I don't take myself somewhere and look up at a building, I won't have to worry. Like coming to London, it's fine because they're not, they're, they are tall, but I just, I wouldn't put myself in a situation where I have to look up to a building and yeah. sort of just carry on. Okay. But it's just, it's odd. I just can't put a finger on it and I can't, I don't understand why. Okay. But really. Have you ever considered trying to face it? Because I'm just going to be showing the viewers uh, a video in just a second of a lady facing her fear. And I mm -hmm. will be asking our expert if that is the best way to deal with phobias. But have you ever thought to yourself, do you know what? I'm going to get over this myself and I'm going to go to somewhere and just mm. look up at this building and just get over it. Have you ever wanted to do that or is that the, the idea completely freak you out? No, it doesn't freak me out. I do want to do it because I need to get over it because I've got a little boy. So I, I don't okay. want him to yeah. take on my sort of phobia as mm -hmm. such. Because, you know, it's, it's because it's so rare. Not, oh, I don't know if it's rare. I mean, it might not be. But because no one else has really heard of it, he might think when he's older I'm a bit weird and I don't want him to think I'm weird. Oh, bless. <laughs> And because I'm supposed to be his role model, and he thinks yeah. I'm scared of buildings, he's just thinking she's yeah. a bit odd. Okay. How old um, is he? Three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. Okay. Doesn't um, know anything yet? No. Well, okay. No, I don't think... Make don't... sure he doesn't watch this book. No. <laughs> no. I'm going to record it and keep it okay. myself. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I want to visit the Shard. Okay. So I want, but I think to do that, I'm going to have to sort of go to it, obviously. Yeah. But I, I won't, you know, I want to look at it. I can look at it on a picture. But I'd, I won't go to the bottom and look up. I'll just go okay. in and go up to the floor and have cocktails or whatever. But yeah, I'm not going to. All right. Yeah. Well, let's, we'll ask our expert when she comes on after the break. Okay. But let's take a look at this lady now trying to face her fear. And I thought she was really brave, actually, the poor thing. But let's take a look at this. <laughs> Mm, yeah. <laughs> Do it what Oi did. Just let him walk across your hand and straight back onto okay, Finn's hand. Do it the way that. Let her do it the way that Oi did it. Let her rock, walk, her, yeah, walk across the hand and then onto his back. <laughs> This time, you watch it. it. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it, Joyce. 
<laughs> you can do it. We'll get it. We'll get it. movement. It's like the crab, honey. I think you're out of. Are you out of it? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go, honey. Da, 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 da. He's like fields. I'm not moving. Neither is she. <laughs> She's feeling you. Oh God! I have a spider on my hand. Oh my God! She's not gonna bite me. No. She doesn't bite. Yay! You did it! You wash your hands. Go wash yeah, you because it makes it itchy. Itchy, itchy. Itchy, itchy. That's the thing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vicky. Oh, I'm so See, Vicky, that wasn't so frightening, was it? <laughs> Wow, I thought she was really, really brave. You said you wouldn't, you wouldn't touch no, a tarantula, no would you? No way. No way would I ever do that. I'm so scared of spiders. That's what I'm saying. Even if someone's not afraid of spiders, but that spider that big, <laughs> any, I think anyone would be afraid to touch Ooh. that. But anyway, she did really well. Okay, so after the break, we'll be speaking to Dr. Audrey Tang, and she's going to be giving us her take on phobias and how they can be treated. So do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Welcome back to today's show where we are speaking all about phobia. So now it's time to speak to Dr. Audrey Tang, who's back with us, and she has a special interest in phobias. Hello, Hi, Audrey. Hi, Chrissy. Thank you so much for having me back. It's lovely it's to have you. Lovely to be back. <laughs> lovely to meet Charlie as well. Hey. So why, why are you so fascinated in phobias? I, well, I think the mind is just a fascinating uh, part, um, and phobias to me, because they're so inexplicable, and they mm. have such uh, bizarre effects on our behaviour, I think that really interests me. Um, it okay. was the one topic that I loved teaching, probably the one topic my students found the most interesting as well because I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, whilst I don't treat people for phobias, it's mm. just academically, I just find them so interesting. Okay. And, and what about what Charlie was saying about her, her fear of tall buildings? Have you heard of that one before? I've not heard of that one, no. Okay. Um, but then again, you can understand it perhaps in the sense, you, you've already put a reason behind it, which was yeah. that when you were very small, the building was very imposing. That does make sense. And then mm -hmm. that fear can be transferred from one experience to other experiences. Okay. Uh, one of the most common ways of getting a phobia really is association. And unfortunately, because our minds are quite fluid, mm -hmm. we sometimes do start broadening, broadening that association a little bit more. Okay. One example of conditioning <coughs> a phobia in, in somebody which I don't advocate, it's incredibly unethical, so don't do it at home, <laughs> um, was done by psychologists, behaviourist psychologists, who believe that we learn through association. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, Watson and Rayner, it's one of the oldest um, psychological experiments that was done, and it was done on a little boy called Little Albert. And little Albert liked playing with rats. Uh, no problem with them, enjoyed playing with them, stroking them and so on. And Watson and Rayner would grab a couple of <coughs> dustbin lids every time he saw this rat, crash them together behind him, scaring the little boy, making him cry. Yeah. Um, which then resulted, Aww. if you then pair those dustbin lids and the rat enough times, okay, you've got a very doesn't... scared boy on presentation of oh, the rat. I see. And unfortunately, I hope we haven't given anyone at home any idea. Yes, exactly. <laughs> unfortunately, what happened kind of makes sense. <laughs> it, he transferred You're that right, fear. Charlie, my love. Oh, <laughs> okay. oh, oh was it because you were talking about the buildings? Oh, you see, maybe <coughs> this. Yeah. Could, could well, you me? mentioned before actually, you get a dry, dry throat. Yeah, yeah. Go a little bit funny. Okay, <clears throat> go have some water. Don't worry. Thank you. Okay. But um, um, the fear was transferred from the rats into rabbits and into oh. even into Santa Claus's beard. So oh, wow. this fear broadened in, and uh, they couldn't explain that because they hadn't conditioned the rabbits and they hadn't conditioned Father Christmas. Uh, and so that's, that's where the problem can come in. With phobias, okay. it may be one thing that <coughs> yeah. expands to something else. Yeah. For example, um, agoraphobia, we all mm. know, is a very common phobia, fear of going outdoors. But sometimes this can actually be due to emetophobia, which is the fear of being sick or seeing someone be sick, mm -hmm. because that happens outside more often than inside. Oh, okay. So it can relate to then fearing leaving the house. It's like one thing, one, one thing is masking the other. Oh, wow. 
Um, really, in terms of phobias, there is a classification for them, and to be diagnosed with a phobia, you use the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual 5 now, it's on um, edition 5, and you have to have an unexplainable excessive fear for a duration of over six months okay. and it has to be so bad to the point of you actively avoid that particular well, such effect in your life exactly now, so exactly the object or the because... or the situation yeah. that you're put in uh, and that's to get the diagnosis of being a phobic a lot of us dislike a lot of things yeah. and find them a little bit unpleasant but to have that phobia it does affect your life it can be How, debilitating extremely times, yeah. but however having said that listening to your um experiences yeah. charlie what you were saying was i think really motivating really positive that you didn't want your son yeah. to feel mm -hmm. that yeah. it, either mum was weird or that um he would should be scared of tall buildings mm -hmm. and sometimes we have a lot more resilience in ourselves than we realise. And if we want to overcome that fear, what can be very debilitating, we suddenly find that, that strength to be able to yeah. face it. You've got it a reason because to. Because you've got to, to do it. Yeah. And I think that's a really positive story. That I think that's good. really yeah, important. Definitely. I need to. Yeah. I, need to, I need to get over it, really. I have yeah, to. This, this is it. Now, would you, would you recommend what we saw there with the lady in the spider? Do you think Charlie should do something like that? Or? <laughs> what we <laughs> saw <laughs> is, is termed flooding. Um, what that means flooding. is flooding. Okay. And it is a form of treatment, again, very unethical. I wouldn't <laughs> advise you trying this at home either. It's where you put somebody in their fearful situation and just literally throw them into it. But what if they want to do it themselves? If they want to do it themselves, by all means, but there's a problem with okay. it in that if you, the idea behind flooding is that you can't maintain that level of anxiety for over a certain period of time, mm. usually about one to two hours. And the earliest psychologist who actually dealt with somebody through flooding was Wolpe. And what he did was a girl was afraid of cars. She just threw about in the back of a car and drove around for two hours. And you know, after two hours, she stopped crying. Mm. <laughs> <And> <laughs> she was cute. But it, as you saw with the lady as well, it, she finally stopped screaming, but that could be because her anxiety was ebbing anyway. Yeah. However, if you actually, she was, if you gave up halfway through, so someone really wants to have this flooding therapy, or I want to face it, I want to do it, but you stop because they're crying too much, what you've actually risked doing is making their phobia even worse oh, because wow. now you've extended it to the point where they're crying, they're shaking, they're physically unable okay. to function. So that's why systematic desensitization, what they do at London Zoo, showing the pictures of the spiders, moving to maybe a spider at the back of the room, then bringing the spider closer. Right. That's a better way of doing it because it's just it just takes a little bit more time and you get used to it. The other problem with flooding, of course, is because if phobias are come about through association, if I were to say, bring a great big spider in and throw it at Charlie, she'll associate me with the fear and start disliking me. So, okay, there's, so there's a lot of problems with that. Yeah, okay. But now, what about, what about these kind of phobias where there isn't an explanation? Because obviously there's some things that can start from childhood or a bad yeah. experience, but the ones that have nothing to, don't, don't, don't seemingly have anything to do with anything and they just pop up. Why, why is that? This would be more perhaps the psychodynamic approach where psychodynamic psychology talks about unconscious desires and wishes manifesting themselves in conscious real life. And Freud, whether you believe in his practices or not, he does give a good example. Mm -hmm. And he speaks of a boy called Little Hans who was afraid of horses. And what Freud realised through seeing the little boy was that he used to call his daddy, uh, well, he used to play horses with his daddy, and he used to say things like, oh, daddy, don't trot away from me. So it could okay. well have been that Hans was actually afraid of his father, and it was manifesting oh, itself right, in the horse. Okay. Uh, perhaps a more plausible explanation was, and it was in Hans's records, that he saw a horse and carriage accident, and that could have really explained the fear okay. of horses. But sometimes it can be a displacement activity. We're actually so afraid of facing some kind of trauma that we've actually transferred it into something which is perhaps more socially acceptable or socially desirable. Okay. Now, what's the first step if someone does want, want treatment for phobia? Is it counselling, which you're saying, just talking about it? Talking therapy can work. Cognitive behavioural therapy, as Helen has suggested as well, mm. is probably the most effective way because... Can you what, explain what that is? Yes, yes. Before we go to what break? that does is it um, reframes the thought process, first of all. The cognitive side of it is all about saying to somebody, well, what's the worst that can happen? What is the actual okay. fear? It might be acting out that, that fear. And then the behaviourism, uh, behavioural side of it is actually having practice and 
a bit of homework, maybe if you've got a fear of spiders, is looking up a picture of a spider, okay. actually actively yeah. doing so something about it. Yes, okay. and that makes the difference. The act of doing it mm -hmm. uh, makes it often makes the cure a little easier to come by. Okay, so there is always hope for someone that does want to, to Absolutely. face it. Absolutely, I think one of the things we were talking about um, <clears throat> before we went on air was actually the importance of the support from partners and okay. families yeah. because because sometimes fears are, or phobias are unusual. I don't want to say weird. The reason mm. I don't want to say weird is if somebody said, oh, I've got a peanut allergy, no one goes, oh, you're weird. They yeah, say, yeah. no, it's an allergy. Mm. Fear is absolutely normal. It's mm. something that we experience and it's an unpleasant experience. Why should we be weird? Because mm. we have a fear of something. Yeah. And so partners, what they sometimes can do is they know what makes us scared and they it's almost like picking a at a scab it's yeah. let's let's <laughs> have a look at that if they know you're afraid of tall buildings I know Charlie was saying it's just go and have a look at look up there because of the reaction yeah. and it it is it provokes a reaction That's but unkind, it's everybody. not nice it's, it's not, not nice, nice. It's <laughs> but actually I would say sometimes um, um my partner does this I have a strange phobia as well I have a phobia of stained glass windows Okay. Uh, which is very, very odd. But I, I date that back to, um, if you remember, with Broomfield Park, we used to have a clinic there. It was a Tudor, mock Tudor building and it very leaded. Uh -huh. And I had injections there. So I think I've associated oh, the I two associated it. together. Okay. But my partner, every time stained glass comes on television or something, he'll say, oh, don't look. But of course, <laughs> neurolinguistic programming, we we channel out don'ts. So immediately, it, I, I just hear, look. Oh, no. <laughs> So, partners, be kind. That's very naughty, Audrey's partner. Yes. Stop doing that. <laughs> right, ladies, it's been a pleasure speaking to you both. Thank you so much Thank for sharing you. your, your story. And Audrey, thanks for the advice and, and the breakdown of it. Very understand, very good. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, guys, so do stay tuned because after the break, I'll be going over some tips with coach Chris Brown on how you can self-treat your phobia. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back everyone. So I'm now joined by Coach Chris Brown. Hello, Coach. coach. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call you Co uh, Chris or Coach now. Yeah, uh, Coach Chris Brown. Uh, how are you doing? I'm good, how are yeah, you? Yeah. It's Good, really good. I was listening to, as we were talking about the doctor speaking at the camera, I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. I thought it was brilliant, brilliant advice as well for those who are suffering, who's watching at this time. Have you, you know, ever had a phobia? Well... Or have a phobia? Do, do you know what? Oh, well, here we go. Do you know that little boy that um, Dr. Audrey was talking about? And they took him. And little rats? Yeah. That was me. Really? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. No, no, I'm joking. No, I used to. Um, it's funny, um, a while back, I... I had a situation where I got stuck on a train mm -hmm. in a tunnel and it was in the middle of summer and it was jam-packed. I remember feeling that you just can't get out. And it took a little while after, every time I got on the train, I was like, I'd feel myself breathing. I realised, hang on, this yeah. has turned into something. So it's similar, just bit by bit by bit, okay. go over. it's gone completely, gone. you know, in Brilliant. that sense. But I remember the actual situation, it was terrible. What about yourself? Mm -hmm. Have you had... Phobia? I've had, I haven't got one at the moment and I won't, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get any. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I did, I did have a really bad phobia of death. And I think okay. maybe this is something that other other people probably might be quite common. But I was afraid of not existing anymore. I was afraid of nothingness. Right. I was and it used to send me into severe panic attacks as well when oh, I would wow. think about it. And obviously, it's not something that you could get away from because it's inevitable. And it, it was something that was horrible for me. I, I used to be afraid of going to bed at night because that's when I would think about it more. Right, My right. mind wasn't sort of occupied with, with work or anything Gosh. else. So it was. It was. It went on for about seven years. How did you get out of it? Uh, in my case, I had. I tried counselling first of all, which right. for me it didn't sort of quite hit the hit the spot. But right. then I, I actually got help through prayers because then I started yeah. to believe in like an afterlife and that there is. I believe in heaven now and I know there's a God and stuff like that. Right. So for, for me, that cured it completely. Because oh. the, the issue before was, oh, what if there's nothing? What if there's but I have, a, I have a strong faith now, so that's helped me. That makes a complete basically. difference. That, yeah, it does. But does. I know how, how debilitating mm. it can be and how awful it can feel mm. to have something like that. And because it's something that I couldn't avoid, I couldn't get away from, it was like it was there all the time. Right, right. On my mind all the time. So. That one day it's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's well, kind of terrible. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. But I, I do feel for people that do have, you know, these kind of debilitating ones that are, you know, you can't see, you can't feel like you can get away from them. Help. 
Yeah, exactly. Help. But there's, there's always help. There's always help. So the, you know, let's go through a few points now to help yeah, the viewers to you know to understand mm. things a bit more. Um, now, the first point is acknowledge you you do have a problem. Now, I know this sounds like a silly thing to say, but there are people that actually avoid it. They avoid talking about it. They avoid trying to think about it. But there is an issue there. So if you do want to get help for something, the first step is to actually admit that you do have a problem. Sometimes it's to yourself, sometimes it's, it's to another person. Yeah, and I think it's a thing of the peer pressure of other people, what people yeah. are going to think of you. People tend mm -hmm. to shove it in the back. And I think the more you shove it in the back, it yeah. goes back into recess there and it comes out worse later on, yeah. some way or another. So don't worry about it, get help. Yeah, definitely. Number two is to not beat yourself up about it just because it seems silly. So to you, it's not silly. And it's, it's your personal experience that matters, not what anyone else thinks. So. Someone might, you might even hear people around you having a laugh about phobias mm. or, or making jokes about things. Yeah. And that makes you feel even worse. That makes you feel like, oh, you know what, this is so silly. I'm, there's something wrong with me. I'm weird. You know, like we were talking with Audrey yeah. earlier. You know, you're not weird. You just, you just have an issue that needs dealing with. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it's very real to the individual. Exactly. It's not so yeah. real to the person who's looking at the person going through it. So it's pretty, like I said, when I went through that situation, it seemed like nothing at the time. Yeah. But the fact that it was actually stuck there for about, must have been 15 minutes, jam packed, really hot, can't breathe. It triggered it off after. So it was real to me at the time, yeah. you know? Thank it's, God yeah. I got over it, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, number three is learn to deal with the panic and anxiety that you feel. So maybe you haven't actually got to the, st the stage of getting treatment for or seeing a professional about it. But in the meantime, until you do that, if, if you are going to do that, try and deal with that anxiety. So whether that's speaking to someone that you know that you trust or, or calling someone, something that, that actually helps calm you down, consider that and know what actually makes you feel better to, to have that as an outlet for you to yeah. deal with that, that anxiety. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting because I remember looking this up as well and saying the whole idea of, as you said, speaking to someone, even stri striking up a conversation with a stranger at the time when you're actually mm -hmm. going through that, redirecting your mind, put it in another place instead until you actually yeah. pass that phase that's about 15 it. minutes or so. Yeah. yeah. And um, number four, also speak to someone that you trust about it. So if there is someone um, close to you that is aware of what's going on, they can actually watch out for you. They can maybe see triggers and can help calm you down even before the situation gets out of hand, especially if you feel like you're going to have a panic attack of some right. sort. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's some, it does help to tell those close to you. Yes, and something that you mentioned there, which is really important, you just mentioned the word triggers as well. When we mm -hmm. actually identify what actually triggers off, we're better at handling it and knowing about the situation that are going to kick that off. So yeah. it's very important. Okay. And number five, this one's a very, very important one. You need to know when it's time to get help. So, you know, you've, you've tried to do things yourself, you're, you're feeling overwhelmed. So if you experience any of these, then you should seek professional help. So the first one is if your phobia is causing intense and disabling fear, anxiety or panic. So if you're like me, you know, you're having lots of panic attacks and it's, it's ruining your life basically because it was ruining my life, then it's time to get help. Uh, another point is if you recognise that your fear is excessive and unreasonable but cannot help it, you can't, you know, whatever you do doesn't seem to help, doesn't seem to alleviate the problem, get help if you are at that stage. Uh, also, if you avoid certain situations and places because of your phobia, because that, that again, you imagine, you know, you're afraid of certain things outside and then you can't yeah. work, yeah. then you get into financial problems, then you could have marriage problems and relationship problems because of the financial That's problems, it. and it just, it just gets out of it's control. It's got a spiral where it carries yeah. on, especially in relationships as well. If you're with someone, a partner who doesn't actually understand that yeah. and says, just come on, that's silly. Yeah, get over it, yeah, silly. It's not the way at all. No. You know? And when you think about it as well, I mean, I was looking this up, it's about um, 10 million people in the UK suffer from some phobia or another. Mm -hmm. You're not the only one. Yeah. So don't feel that bad yeah. about it. Okay. And also you should look for help if um, your avoidance interferes with your normal routine or causes significant distress. So mm -hmm. again, sort of getting out and about, doing things that you like to do. If you're not able to do those things anymore, it's time to get help. And also if it stops you from getting support for other health problems, for example, if you're afraid of using the phone or seeing the doctor, that is something serious because yeah. you know that could endanger your life. And also, as Audrey mentioned before, if you've had the, something for oh, at least six months, then that is also time to think about getting help. Yes, and there's no definitely. shame in it, guys. No shame in it whatsoever. And there are many organisations, bodies that you can actually yeah. contact and get that help as well. Yeah. And you can speak to anonymously as well. Mm -hmm. You can actually go over the phone and do it. Yeah, yeah so. definitely.
Great stuff. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Chrissy. Coach Chris Brown. <laughs> Coach Chris Brown dot com. Dot com. You got it. <laughs> Coach Chris like, Brown I, dot com. I love, I love that title. <laughs> See? Plug for you. <laughs> All right, guys. So we have reached the end of today's program. But if you want information about the guests that we've had on today or on any other show, you can visit the website chriscbshow.tv. And also, if you'd like to send myself a message, you can do so in two ways. There's a form on the website as well, chrissybishow.tv. And also, you can visit my personal website, mylifeafterdepression.com, and get in touch that way. But the main thing is to remember is that you're not strange, you're not weird. It's just an issue, and it can be sorted out. See you next time.